Well, hello and welcome back to the channel. And today I've got a little bonus episode for you because I've finished all the work I've got to do here at the warehouse. I've got a flight this evening and I need to get home still. So I thought, let's take this out for our first drive. Take me back from Surrey, back to my flat in London. Gonna have my 360 uh, camera mounted on the windscreen so I'll be able to talk to you, but also show you the driving experience. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let's give it a go. <laughs> Got a bit of a squealy belt. should have done some work on this car before taking it out a bit more than I have anyway but such a gorgeous day I wanted to take it out window down just enjoy myself third gear yeah that's it but it's shorter than first it's a bit strange <laughs> this thing gives me a smile it really does oh Got half a tank of fuel. Interesting to see how our engine temperature goes. So far, so good. Oil pressure is fine. Clock is still wrong. <laughs> no radio. So you just got the noise of a diesel engine. A bit more about that. It's a Perkins engine, 4236 engine. Don't know how you say it. Um, but yeah, it's a 3.9 litre diesel. Uh, which is basically they're using marine vessels a lot because they're just known to chug and chug and just keep going so they're very reliable or supposed to be anyway oh that's reverse <laughs> gotta be use that so they're very very reliable but they are slow now this is fitted with an overdrive which should come in handy also just having to get used to the indicators being on the other side engine so I think you'll be very hard 
you'll find it very hard to get past 3,000 revs, but it's very torquey as well, very, very powerful at the low end. Not powerful, you know, it'll pull well at low end, which is brilliant for towing, uh, which is the main reason I got this car. My Mercedes can only tow 2.1 tonne. I mean, to be honest, even bringing this back with the heavier diesel engine, it was a bit sketchy if I'm honest. But it's the last time I was towing with that Mercedes, so I just thought, you know what, let's just do it. Um, oh, that's that reverse again. I might just roll the window up. Which way is it? That way. Just so you can hear me a bit better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, a, it was a bit of a sketchy one to tow, but we got it back here. And the point is, this can now tow, this can tow four ton, which is... An incredible amount. I mean, I think legally I can only tow three and a half uh, because on a B plus E license. I do have a class two HGV license, Pat C. I am tempted to just do my articulated license as well, just so I can tow a bit heavier. I mean, I could pick up a couple of cars at a time on a bigger trailer, potentially. We'll have a think about that. But uh, for now, this is all we need. I'm, I'm not, I'm gonna modernize it a little bit, which I know for a Range Rover purist might annoy them a bit. But I want to get a modern entertainment system in here. I can always get another dash, um, so I've still keep the original. But this one does have holes in where I think they've sort of mounted their phones, so it's not a perfect dash anyway. But if I can update this, get an infotainment system in, aircon, that's going to be very much needed. Well, not really too much in, in England, but we'll need it before long anyway for the hotter days. The window, can't rely on the windows too much. But now we're still looking okay engine temperature engine oil pressure still good engine still yet to warm up yeah we're looking all right let's see if we can get this to line up right there. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. well i love this car i'm not gonna lie it's absolute beauty it sits so high up i mean i'm i'm six foot three and i'm, I'm on the top but doesn't feel uncomfortable, it feels actually quite comfy in here. I'd like an armrest, which the newer Range Rover Classics had, I believe, like the four doors. But even still, I can fit one of those. Fair gear. Oh, there we go. It's just a straight down, I'm gonna have to get used to that. Love it, the age of the thing, the, uh, the speedos just sort of going up and down like this <laughs> when I'm driving. I did check, all the indicators are working before setting off, we've got brakes. Oil level was fine as well. So yeah, we're looking all right. So far, so good. A couple of issues with the car that I've noticed so far. Obviously they've got the lovely split tailgate which Range Rover have kept to this day. But uh, the, one of the levers that sort of straightens out when you pull it down, that's not actually quite latched in properly. So I'm gonna have to sort that. The N on the back of this, the, for the Range Rover, where it says that, the N isn't stuck on very well, so it's just currently sitting in the boot. Um, the, there is a leak on the front right uh, from the swivel. Uh, so that's suspension related. So probably gonna have to look at, well, either getting a new, a new actual sort of ball joint in there and a new seal it's probably a gasket related leak or this car doesn't have abs so might even upgrade it to uh to maybe a td5 axle that has abs i've been told by a guy that i met on the way back down who is quite keen on his classic range rovers and discoveries defenders as well and he said the td5 ax front axle swap actually isn't too bad you've just got to weld on some new uh, mounting brackets but other than that, it's near enough a straight swap. Don't know how true that is. I need to look into that still, but we've got options on this car. And that's what's so great about these Range Rovers. Everything's interchangeable. If I wanted a modern dash, well, I say modern. If I wanted the, the dash from the 80s that you see in the four doors, all I'd have to do is near enough, just unbolt this and put this other one straight on. And it is tempting. I don't know what quite the full design I'm going to go for on this dash yet, but it's bound to be a good one. It'll only be for when I own it anyway, because it's gonna hopefully be quite a modern dash, as in sort of, uh, you know, 21st century. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> lots of little things that I can, hope, lots of little things I can do and 
for now anyway on this drive, just want to enjoy it. Proper chug at this thing. Go on. And <laughs> you do get some stairs. More from the elder, elderly people, I think, who actually seem to recognise this car. Otherwise, you just think it's some beaten down old Range Rover, which I guess it is to some extent. They love it. How are we looking? I'm not sure the temperature gauge is working at the bottom, either that or when the engine's not even started to warm up. This one is starting to move up now, so 100 Fahrenheit. Should go up to about 180. I do need to clean that windscreen properly. The car does need a proper clean. Just haven't had a chance to do it yet. Well, it's a Range Rover anyway, it's allowed to be dirty, I think. Driving during daytime, so I haven't had to test the lights yet. Um, I think a lot of people tend to upgrade them to modern LEDs just to make them a bit brighter. If it's anything like my Mustang, the lights on that are awful. It's actually terrifying to drive at night in. But I haven't tested these ones yet, so we'll see. Still kind of getting used to it, although it's a very basic system. There's actually, it's, everything's in different positions. I mean, the wipers are on the left rather than the right. The indicators are on the right rather than the left. And then the headlights, oh no, that's the horn. I think the horn's over there. So, still got to figure it all out. I mean, I'm letting that lady out back there at the traffic lights. Didn't know how to flash her out, so I just waved her. <laughs> The odometer says 25,000 miles, but let's be honest, it's definitely rolled around at least once, probably twice in that time. Although it's only had eight previous owners, so maybe it's only rolled around once. I'm not too sure. Can I need to sneeze? <coughs> I do suffer from hay fever, so you're gonna have to excuse me if I'm sniffing a bit. I think it's just coming into pollen season. But what a day! So excited to have this car, man. Now, obviously, this cost me seven and a half thousand pounds. The Mercedes, when I get back, I need to tidy it up a bit and then look to sell that. And I should hopefully sell that for somewhere between 19 and a half to 20,000, depending on if I go to trade or privately. Um, and now, the plan with that. It's going to be to, well, basically spend, invest a little bit into this car. I right, say potentially a front axle swap and an infotainment system. And then whatever's left over, we're going to try and do a little series of sort of quicker flips. Just trying to get cars in and get them straight back out near enough, you know, in a couple of weeks. Just basically doing little things like giving them a deep clean and a proper valet. Seeing people do it online to really good effect. Um, but we'll see. I think also just having some cheaper cars and cheaper flips is probably a good thing. Like a lot of you have said, you know, I, I really should have practiced in terms of the Sierra paintwork uh, or the Cosworth paintwork. I should really have practiced on something else first, you know, a cheaper car or something and made the mistakes on that. But for now, I want to get some, I now agree, and I'm going to get some cheaper cars and work on it a bit on those just try and get that process down properly. But uh, I do appreciate how you've all been incredibly supportive about it. I appreciate it must be horrible to watch, especially for those of you who've been in the trade well, all your lives, to watch someone making a hash of it like I have. Well, it might take me a bit longer, but I will get it right, I promise you that. And I will do the car justice. It's just gonna be, it's gonna take a bit longer, sadly. But it's getting there, it's getting there. We've still got a low end misfire. You will hear about this, but we've had the cam belt done, the brakes done, and I actually had some new spark, uh, spark plugs, fuel injectors bought. Bought some new fuel injectors, apparently they were tested. The mechanics put them in and they weren't working. <laughs> so he's put the old ones in. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna arrange to have those serviced. Have the, have the actual injector service, the current ones, and then put those back in. Um, and that should hopefully help our low end misfire. 
There is also still a very slow, slow oil leak and I need to figure out what to do with that. Could be that the gasket on the oil sump, which is the container that holds the oil, might be gone, but we'll, uh, we'll have a proper look at that when we, when we get back from holiday anyway. For now, hopefully this car is going to get me home. There was one issue uh, which, with the fuel tank actually. Uh, diesel is £1.46 currently, up in up where I was collecting in Scotland. And down down here it's about £1.68, something like that. So it's about 20p cheaper a litre, which you can't ignore really. So I thought, you know what, I'll just, I'll, obviously I had to fill up my, my Mercedes, but I thought I might as well fill this one up as well. And after about halfway, I didn't notice initially, but fuel was just coming, was just going, it was leaking straight out into the forecourt, which wasn't very fun. Go on, mate. No. <laughs> Appreciate the car. <laughs> trying to flip me off or something. <laughs> just appreciate the car. But anyway, I'm going to sit in this traffic for a bit, no point, nothing really for you to see here, but when we get back up towards the 03 to head back into London, we'll catch back up. Okay, well we're getting a bit nearer to being out of this traffic now, and I thought I'd run over a little bit more just why I've made this decision. So, I, I touched on it briefly in the last video, but I've actually done some sums since then. And my Mercedes to keep just to run, not even to drive, just to run it on the road every day. It was costing me, I think it was £5.24. Now this car is costing me 82p. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an amount that's just hard to ignore, to be honest. I mean, I, I just don't do the miles anymore. I, I, I'll be lucky to do maybe 3,000 in this a year now. So, you know what, it might not... There's Wolf. It might not be perfect and it might take a bit more maintenance. I think the service intervals are shorter in terms of miles. But it's gonna be a labor of love. You know, if I was servicing the Mercedes, it's just a chore, but to service this, it's gonna be great fun. And uh, I'm already kind of looking forward to getting into it. I'm gonna fit some new filters, new oil, etc., etc. But uh, yeah, it's been good. Pretty, pretty happy with it. Also, the Mercedes, whilst it's worth 19 and a half to 20 grand now, that's going to just continue to depreciate. I think this car at seven and a half thousand is the lowest it's ever going to be. I think if anything, it's going to go up over time as these become more and more heavily sought after, but there's going to be less and less of them. A lot of these are rusted out, and that's why there's not too many of them now. But this one has been worked on showing photographs of it with the body off having the uh, having the chassis welded and worked on
thank you so much for watching and I'll see you when I get home. And well, she got me home, absolutely no trouble at all. Uh, didn't even look like it was in trouble at any stage, so really, really happy with this. Um, but anyway, that's the end of this episode. If you enjoyed this video on the Range Rover, then do drop a comment down below. Let me know if there's a bit of an appetite for it, because I'll gladly film more videos of this car and when I'm working on it as well. But let me know, otherwise I'll just sort of have it as a personal car. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Take care and bye.